Mr. President, the road to victory will be long and hard, but united in purpose and with a deep sense of justice and the unbreakable spirit of our soldiers and our people, Israel will prevail. And I want you to know you're not alone. You are not alone. As I emphasized earlier, we will continue to have Israel's back as you work to defend your people. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and President Biden speaking in Tel Aviv this morning. President Biden is planning on asking Congress for $100 billion in supplemental funding for Israel, as well as Ukraine. He's also tying this money to the border funding and disaster aid as well. I want to talk more about that, exactly what does border funding mean. Joining me right now is Missouri Congressman Jason Smith. He is the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. Mr. Chairman, always a pleasure. Thanks very much for being here. It's great to be with you, Maria. So, I have so much to talk to you about this morning from the war and the financial needs there to, of course, the speaker race. First, let's talk about this Israeli aid. I know there's a lot of common ground in terms of supporting Israel. Is there common ground in tying this money to Ukraine funding? I know 117 Republicans voted against sending any more money to Ukraine, but now the president wants to tie all of this together. Is that where this is going? It's it's hard to tell exactly where it's going, Maria. I can tell you that it is very bipartisan in the House and in the Senate amongst Republicans and Democrats in supporting Israel. The funding for Ukraine is a different story. You see a lot of disagreements and divisions. But Israel is our greatest ally. It's our friend. They are in need. And, in fact, we will find a way to provide the resources to Israel. Well, where is this money coming from, Congressman? I mean, let's face it. You have been having a fight with the White House and the Democrats now for over a year, a year and a half. Actually, the whole time Biden is in office, Kevin McCarthy tried umpteen times to get meetings with this president to try to come up with boundaries on spending. It hasn't happened. So where is this $100 billion coming from? Yeah, what it's going to be is more debt. That's in fact. Um, because right now we're spending more than $2 trillion in a deficit just for this year. That means that we're borrowing from the Chinese. We're borrowing uh, from other entities. We're at over $32 trillion. On the average day, we spend roughly $2 billion in just interest on our debt. That's where we're at. But that's, in fact, if we spend $100 billion, it's going to come—it's going to lead to more borrowing. Well, thanks for being so frank and practical, because that's what we all figured. And the fact is, is we don't understand if, in fact, this money is being spent wisely. The watchdog group OpenTheBooks.com has found and reported that the Biden administration sent more than a billion dollars of U.S. taxpayer money to the Palestinians. The Trump administration, as you know, completely froze that aid to Palestine back in 2018, saying that the money was being used to support groups like Hamas. The State Department this morning is responding to the report. It claims the money is not benefiting terrorists. But, Congressman, where did that come from then? The administration is proposing another $260 million for the Palestinians in the 20. 24 budget request. Isn't that right? This is exactly why I'm adamantly opposed to these large spending bills, yeah. is so that they'll pass a 2,000-page bill where money will go to all these different pet, pro pet projects. The American people, they do not want us sending money to countries who love to burn our flag. And we need to make sure we prioritize that and we cut out entities and countries who want to destroy us. I mean, thousands of people are dead because of Iranian-backed terrorist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah as well. Here's your colleague, uh, chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Michael McCall, with me this Sunday. Watch. $30 billion of unenforced sanctions on oil, right? I mean, that has helped them build their war machine, their nuclear weapons program. And guess what else it helped? It helped them give them $150 million to Hamas and a bunch of weapons that they then used to invade Israel last Saturday. And, and conduct this massacre on the ground. Uh, in addition, Maria, you know this hostage negotiation, but giving, you know, getting five innocent Americans out in exchange for six very culpable Iranian prisoners, culpable of espionage, for lack of a better word, that was an unfair trade in and of itself. But then you throw six billion dollars on top of that. I mean, Congressman, look at where we are. OK, look at the, the, the world of hurt we are in as a result of bad policy. But I've got I've to ask you, was it not reckless 
to have Kevin McCarthy step down and now you have no speaker. Why couldn't he stay in the job until another speaker was named or stay in the job until we have clarity? God forbid something happens to this president. We've got Kamala Harris. God forbid that doesn't work out. It's supposed to be the Speaker of the House to take the presidency. We don't have one. Maria, you're exactly right. Your sentiment is exactly what I hear from folks in Missouri and all over this country. They are fed up and upset that less than 4 percent of the Republicans in the House of Representatives, eight individuals joined with 100 percent of Democrats to oust the Republican Speaker of the House. And it has put us in this position right now for two and a half weeks being without a Speaker of the House. And our, we're seeing the world burn. We're seeing what's going on with Israel. We're seeing the border raging. We're seeing so many issues that need to be addressed. The people's house needs to get back to work. Stop this silliness and 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 stop joining in. We we don't need eight Republicans joining in with AOC, Omar, and Talib and take out Kevin McCarthy. And that's in fact what they did. Well, it's totally reckless that you don't have a speaker right now. At a minimum, McCarthy should have said, "I'm the speaker. I'm staying here until we have." Of clarity. Speaker McCarthy joined me on Sunday and basically said Jim Jordan is going to make it. But let's talk about the House Judiciary Committee chairman because Jim Jordan did not make it last night, right? What can you tell us about his prospects? Jim Jordan losing a vote for House Speaker yesterday, 20 Republicans voting against Jordan, all the Democrats rallying behind Hakeem Jeffries, a second vote expected to be held later today, Congressman. So, what, where is this going? You know, it's so frustrating. You look at Kevin McCarthy, he got 96 percent of the vote of Republicans, and he got ousted. Yesterday, when we had a vote to elect Jim Jordan, he only got 90 percent of the Republicans. Kevin McCarthy still has received more than anyone who's ever been put up. But these eight Eight Republicans continue to join hands with AOC, Pelosi, Tlaib. We're going to have another vote today at 11 o'clock, and hopefully we'll be, be getting elected a speaker. Well, you're wasting time, because what are you now, 30 days away from another government shutdown? November 17th is the day. We have a lot of work to do. We need to stop wasting. Congressman, thank you for being here this morning. We're Maria, watching. it's always great to be with you, and congratulations on 30 years. There's not a harder working journalist than you. Thank you so much, Congressman. Jason Smith joining us this morning.